What is good, Horror Horde? This is your boy, Horror Gamer, back with another video for you. And as you can tell by the title of this video, this is another Horror Gamer Reviews. So, before I get into my Horror Gamer Reviews, just know that your boy, Horror Gamer's Reviews have... That's right. Spoilers in them all day, every day. So if you haven't seen the movie, go check it out. Come back. Let me know in the comment section what you think, whether you agree with me, whether you disagree with me, whether you enjoyed the movie, whether you hated it. Or what do you just think I'm full of shit? So, but just know, anything beyond this point, unfortunately, is on you if you stick with it. So, all right. Now, with all that out of the way, as you can also tell by the title of this video, we're just going to jump right into it. We're going to dive right into Resident Evil Apocalypse. So, what does your boy, Horror Gamer, think about Resident Evil Apocalypse? Well... This is the last good Resident Evil movie that was made. And what do I mean by that? I mean that after this movie, it started taking a turn for the worse. Yes, I, I said that. So, all right. So where do we begin? Basically, this movie takes place right after the original when Alice wakes up from her whatever she's in. Um... And Raccoon City has literally gone to shit. Uh, the, out, the, the virus is out there. People are starting to turn into zombies. Uh, they're starting to um, evacuate Raccoon City. Um, all fuckery is just happening at this point. And so... It starts off... You know, it's like a sunny, bright day. And then, boom! Like, 72 hours later, it's just fucking chaos. And... What this movie did right was it started introducing characters from the game. And what do I mean by that? Well, we get a look at Jill, and we get a look at Carlos, and we get a look at, like, Nikolai, and all these other characters. And um, you, you're thinking, all right, here we go. We're starting. Yeah, we're getting into it now. First one didn't have any characters from the game. Now we got the characters from the game. This is what I'm talking about. We're going to see our favorite characters on the big screen. And this one, it did. It had our big characters on the screen for a good while. You know what I'm saying? It did take time and it did establish, already established characters for a little bit. And then Super Alice came in. And then that's where it all kind of, like I said, that's when he started committing the cardinal sins, in my opinion, with making his wife the headliner of these movies while established characters from the video game that are beloved and that hardcore Resident Evil fans like your boy Horror Gamer respect and love and cherish. Then you're going to take Alice, who's never been in anything, take those established characters, put them on the back burner, and then make her the fucking centerpiece of the Resident Evil franchise. This is where it started, okay? It also had Nemesis, and for, oh my god, for the first time seeing Nemesis on the screen, and then you hear him go, stars, dude, that was fucking, for a Resident Evil fan, that was cinematic masterpiece right there, he looked good, Nemesis looked good in this movie, he looked like the Nemesis from the game, they did a good job with Nemesis, they did a good job with Jill, like, she looked like Jill from the game, you know, she had the outfit, you know, Carlos, he looked good too. Like, it's just, for some reason, they thought it would be a good idea, you know, that Paul W. whatever Anderson decided to be a good idea to make his wife the center point. And so he going to have Alice. This is the craziness. This is towards the end of the movie. He's going to have Alice, you know, Wonder Alice, Super Alice, whatever you want to call her. Shoot the fade or fist fight with Nemesis. Think about that. Alice stepping toe to toe, mano e mano, throwing hands, throwing hands with Nemesis. And not only throwing hands with Nemesis, okay? The reason I'm getting passionate about this is fucking Nemesis. It's one of the most iconic villains in the game there was a whole fucking game based on the, the nemesis it was called resident evil nemesis we're gonna have alice a nobody get into a fist fight with nemesis 
and beat him. Let me let me let me let me repeat that just in case you missed it. We're gonna have Alice get into a fist fight with Nemesis. Nemesis and beat him. Yeah. Right there is when I knew the Resident Evil movie universe was in trouble. Right there. Because who in the fuck is going to beat Nemesis in a fist fight? Did you, ever, did you guys ever see the movie? I'm pretty sure you did. You're my horror horror. You had to have seen it. Did you ever see the movie Friday the 13th Part 8? Remember when Julius went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jason? And then he says, take the best shot, motherfucker. And Jason goes, what is that? Knocks his head into the fucking um, dumpster. That's what should have happened here. There is no way Alice could have went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nemesis and beat him in a fist fight. Come the fuck on. And then, not only that, they give her, they give her, Alice, one of the most iconic scenes in a Resident Evil game. Out of Code Veronica, where... Claire's running around the fucking building and the building's being shot by a helicopter and then she puts her hands up and drops down and the gun... They gave that to her. That's why for the longest time people thought that she was supposed to be the Claire Redfield of the universe. And then they bring Claire in part three. <sighs> like I said, all but that part right there, this movie was good. This movie was a good movie. It brought our characters out for the most part until she came along. They were developing our characters. So, with that ran out of the way, with that passion out of the way, if I have to give Resident Evil Apocalypse a score, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Not because it was bad, but because she threw hands with Nemesis and beat him in a fist fight. That's one of the main reasons why this is getting a lower high score, because... It's just ridiculous. But other than that point, the movie was fantastic. I definitely recommend you check it out. Um, like I said, just go into it knowing what you know. Um, and just know that after this, it's all downhill from here. So Resident Evil Apocalypse is, it is definitely horror gamer approved. But just know this is the last good one. So all right, horror horde. With all that being said, I really hoped that you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And don't forget, if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button along with that dingly ding ding button. That way every time a boy horror gamer throws up one of these horror gamer reviews that you're in the know. And with all that being said, horror horde, I love you guys. Thank you guys. And until next time, this is your boy horror gamer saying, as always, don't fear the darkness. Embrace it.